Because if we take a careful look at the problems that we are facing now across the globe, many parents are not fit to be parents. Really, many people have married and they still have a lot of rectification and suddenly they have children. They themselves who need to guide the children need guidance. That is where, what we are faced with nowadays. You have parents who have suddenly become parents, but they don't know what parenthood is all about. Because the responsibility that comes with a child is very great and they think it's a joke. And in order to address this, we need to go a little bit deeper to resolve the matters and to between the children and the parents and to try and give the children the best of upbringings we need to know that the husband and wife themselves need to have a sense of responsibility and that sense of maturity and responsibility will only come when you are disciplined when you are strict on yourself so many times you have young boys I'm not so sure of the girls but I can talk for the boys you have young boys who have their friends they sit with their friends up to 12 at night and 2 in the morning then a few years later they get married and when they get married they still find themselves making the same time for their friends that is prohibited completely prohibited how can a person how can a person who has now taken somebody's daughter still give preference to his friends over his own wife and this is a sickness that many people are guilty of the time that you spend with your spouse is an act of worship in Islam the time that you spend with your family members is an act of worship in Islam so many people give preference to their businesses over their family members many people just sit and give preference to a newspaper over their family members it's a fact the man comes home from work he is tired he does not speak to anyone he sits down he wants to eat his food he has a temper and next thing he is busy reading the paper or he literally plants himself in front of the television and he is watching television until late hours then he switches it off and goes to sleep he hasn't spoken to his wife he hasn't spoken to his children if any one of us here are guilty of that today is the day you are being told directly that that is a major sin major sin how can you give preference to a television over real people real people another problem is also the internet many people give preference to the internet and spend hours every day until two and three in the morning laughing and joking with a screen if you want them to laugh really you've got to put a screen in front of them they will see what is known as emoticons you know what is an emoticon those small little faces that you have on the screen small cartoon style faces they look at someone who sent them a, an emoticon and they laugh but if you talk to them they will look at you and say hey I'm busy and I want to give you an example of a very good friend of mine one of my best friends very very highly educated and he was so intelligent he had 13 A's at O level and 4 A's at A level he was given a scholarship at the University of Oxford some years later I met him I told him you know tell me what has Allah done with you meaning you know what has happened in your life he tells me brother I gave up the internet I said that doesn't make sense I asked him about himself and he's just telling me I gave up the internet so I said what do you mean he said that is the biggest single achievement of my life and I'm I was confused this was a few years back when the internet was still something new 
Now he told me he became a doctor. He actually became a psychiatrist later. He specialized. He told me, you know what happened to me? I was married and I was addicted to the internet and I was sitting with the internet every day, every single day for six to seven hours. And I became a person whose social life was the net. All my friends were, were on the internet. All the people I spoke to were on the internet. I ate and mostly I even asked for the plate of food to come in front of the screen. So I would eat whilst I'm busy typing, whilst I'm busy looking and so on. And he says, I lost my wife in the sense that she left him. She deserted him after some time. Why? Because if you are not going to give due attention to your wife, who do you want her to get that from? That's a question. Many people are guilty of not spending lighter moments even with their own wives. Where do they want that wife to go and get that from? It is true and we need to talk about it because so many women are suffering in silence. It's a fact of life. They are too embarrassed to mention what is going on. And that is the beginning of the problem. Imagine the children that come out of such a relationship. What warped upbringing will they have? What type of a relation will there be between parent and child when the parent parent relation is non-existent? So many people are guilty of not understanding that they have taken someone's daughter with the name of Allah. When we are officiating a nikah, you and I know that there are certain verses that are read. I'm sure you all know those verses. All of those verses have the consciousness of Allah mentioned in them. And I feel, and let's listen to this very carefully, that the most important verse is the third verse that is read. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu attaqullaha wa koolu qawlan sadeeda. O you who believe, be conscious of your Rabb, be conscious of your Creator, be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and only utter that which is upright, that which is straight, that which is full of happiness, that which is full of contentment, that which is full of truthfulness, that which is away from falsehood, that which is away from deception, that which is not vulgar at all. That is the meaning of the term Sadeed and Sadeed means that which is straight. It will result in all forms of goodness and it will keep you away from all forms of bad and evil. Why is this verse repeated when we are getting married? Can I inform you of one of the reasons? One of the reasons is that do you know that 90% of your problems are caused by the tongue? 90% of any human being's problems are caused by the tongue. So Allah is saying, watch out. Be careful how you use that tongue of yours, especially in marriage. The question I have, how many of us utter words to make our spouses feel good? How many of us utter words to put a smile on the faces of our spouses on a daily basis? I think a lot of us are guilty of never doing that or doing it very little. Every single day, it would be an act of worship for myself and yourselves to say a few words to make your spouse smile, both male and female. An act of worship. If we don't do that, we will have a hollow society. Outwardly, everything seems to be okay. Inside, nothing is okay. And people are suffering in silence. Why do we need people to suffer in silence? We don't. No one needs to suffer. Daughters are so special that when a male marries a female, he is reminded constantly that who you have married is the special child of someone, dear to someone. So we tell the husbands that when you look at your wife, don't just look at her as your wife. That's not the only title she has. She had a title before that, which was more dear and more valuable. What was it? 
she is the daughter of so and so. She also has her own family that loves her and respects her. So do not disrespect her. Do not abuse her. Like they say, don't make her cry. You know, when my wife cries, I always tell her I'm supposed to, I'm not supposed to allow you to cry. She says, I cry out of joy. Mashallah. Okay, that's good. That's a good sign. So if you're crying out of joy and happiness, Alhamdulillah. But if you're crying out of, you know, sadness, you're stuck. There's no way forward. Wallahi, Allah has heard the cry of a wife and a daughter. If you take a look at Surah Al-Mujadalah, named after a woman who came through in order to present her case to Muhammad wasallam, where the husband became disinterested in her. Listen to this. And I, inshallah, I will end on this note. I tell you, very interestingly, there was a woman known as Khawla binti Thalaba, radiallahu anha. So what happened to her is, she was married. And mashallah, you know, a pretty beautiful woman, next thing expecting, she has a child. And when you have a child, what happens? Subhanallah, people forget that you've now born children. You've, you've graduated into a new level of, you know, motherhood now and so on. You will not be the same girl you used to be 20 years back. Things have to change. Perhaps you may change in so many ways. You become wiser and perhaps you may even become a little bit heavier. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. She complained because her husband started losing interest or showed disinterest. She, he was not interested. And he started saying whenever she was trying to get him, get his attention, he would say, you're just like my mother, man. It's okay. You know, you're just like a mother. You're just like my sister and so on. She went to Muhammad sallallahu crying, weeping, complaining. What do I do? This man is saying this to me. He, he refuses to touch me. And at the same time, he is the one who impregnated me. He gave me the children. He is the one who did this, this, this. When I married him, I was in tip top shape and so on. My mothers and sisters, I just want to pause for a moment to tell you that that does not mean that when you have given birth, you should just lose yourself. No, go back. You will be able to retain a lot. If you work on it, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. Whether they are sit-ups, leg-ups, whatever you want to call them, they work. Trust me, they actually work dedicatedly. So don't use a hadith in order for you to throw yourself, you know, to the side. No, work on it. You will feel good by the will of Allah. Like I said, do it for the right reasons. Going back to this narration. So as she's complaining, do you know what happened? The Prophet sallallahu Obviously, it's a difficult situation. What do you say? You need to convince the man. Verses were revealed. قَدْ سَمِعَ اللَّهُ قَوْلَ الَّتِي تُجَادِلُكَ فِي زَوْجِهَا وَتَشْتَكِي إِلَى اللَّهِ Indeed, Allah has heard the argument of the woman who has come to you complaining. To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has heard it. And then he gives the response. And it's a long uh, set of verses where Allah speaks of the punishment of those who say those type of statements. And how special and important the woman is. You don't just say these words. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to make the correct decisions in life.